out with the old. In with the new. Hey guys, welcome to Pellets of Pits. Hey, today is all about the new competition series, Titan Edition. It's all by Pit Boss. It's an Academy exclusive. If you guys want to see this review, here we go. Alrighty, so we get started on the review. Uh, just a couple side notes. I did get this for free. Doesn't change my opinion about the grill. It's going to either show you how well it performs or it's not. I think it's got fantastic features. We can get to those. Um, typically, when I do a, a griddle review or a grill review, I like to start from the bottom and work my way up. This thing seems to be a lot smarter than I am, so let's see if we can do it justice. First things first, you'll notice that each wheel is a locking wheel. It's a 360 caster on all four sides. I love that. I think it's a great upgrade. I'm good with that. Secondly, working our way up, if you notice, we have some doors. Inside the doors, we have to get to a little bit later because there's some stuff in there we need to talk about. But one thing I like about it already is the fact that you can open the doors for storage and all the other stuff you want to put under there with your shelf down. This shelf is obviously up or down. I kind of like the fact that you don't have to open your shelf to open your doors. It comes standard on it. Great by Pit Boss to include that. We can always use more space. Just working away on the back side. if you notice that your cabinet storage space is vented. They also have these two screws right here, which are long enough to be able to support multiple grill grates as well. So when you're done your grill grate or you don't need to use it inside of your smoker, you can just hang them off the back and it's already there for you, out of the way. You have a side table here with three accessory hooks. The side table, also folds down just in case you need to store it and get it out of the way. Working our way up, we're just gonna talk about the hood because that's a really important part. It's a rollback hood. It's the first one I've ever seen. And it's an insulated, it's a double insulated hood. So it's supposed to keep the, uh, the heat in there a little bit better. If you notice here, we have some gasket seal and it's wrapped all the way around for a good uh, support system when you close it. Try to keep those air gaps out of there. Um, also on the back of this is going to be your air gap for your pellet smoker. You can adjust it a little bit. It's hard to tell in the light. Yep. It doesn't close all the way, but the pellet smoker needs to be able to breathe a little bit. But in case you want that extra smoke flavor, there you go. Roll that hood back up with ease. And this is where the fun begins. All right. The shelves slide completely out, which I kind of like. You don't really have to, there's not like a stopping mechanism or anything like that. You just slide them right out. One thing I noticed right away is the fact that we have five positions. One, two, three, four, five, and three shelves, which we can get to that later. So let's pull the guts out of it and show you what we're working with. If you notice here, what Pit Boss is known for is their flame lever system. So you open this up and you can reach temper temperatures up to a thousand degrees. Um, I've never really temped or tested, but I do know that I absolutely love this feature because when I had my Pit Boss Navigator as the first pellet smoker I ever had, I just love the option of reverse searing or be able to come out here really quick, grill some chicken breasts, just grill a few steaks, open it up and you get that flame kiss, which I think what meat deserves is something flame kissed. And it kind of locks in right here. Easy to remove. We want to take the guts out. This piece of metal right here is a lot thicker than the uh, Navigator. Uh, this isn't like a cheap piece of metal. This is pretty thick. I'm impressed by that. Alrighty, Pit Boss's brand new design. This is actually going to run your pellets from the bottom up at a 45 degree angle. And with that comes two things. One, it kind of prevents the blowback or the chances of a fire coming up and getting back into your pellet hopper. Uh, sometimes your pellet dump is up here. And when your flame comes up, it's not all the time, but it has been known to happen. Your pellets can actually catch on fire, feed to the tube, and then all of a sudden it's got a source right here and then it just catches on fire like crazy. Since this is feeding uphill, it does serves two purposes. That one purpose, because it's higher. And now when you open a bag of pellets and you know it's got all that dust in, that dust kind of like settles back down. It's got a way for the dust to fall. And now you're just putting pure pellets into there. I think it's a great idea. I mentioned earlier that inside the cabinet system, you have two features. Right here is your grease trap. It's a bucket, uh, tin lined, and the good thing about that is it's out of the way, right? You don't have to worry about your animals getting into it, the critters, the dogs, anything like that. It's easy to access, easy to hang. Um, and right here is our fire pot. So it's got a little latch system. 
Hope you can see that. Spring loaded, extremely easy. It's got a little handle, pull it out. And there you go. Brand new burn pot. The design is a lot different. I'm not really a scientist, but it looks like the holes have been created different. Um, it's a lot heavier duty and it's got a little area there for the pellets to run down naturally. A lot different. Benefit of this is my old school navigator. You had to take everything apart to get to the burn pot to clean the ashes out of the burn pot. And that's where you get in this habit of like vacuuming up. And I never gotten into that habit of vacuuming. I never liked it. So I just scooped the ashes out myself. This makes it a lot easier. If you notice, just like the other one, there's your grease hole. Grease runs down your side trough, fits naturally in there and funnels right to your grease trap. It's always important to keep your troughs clean because that's how your grease funnels down. Alrighty, so we mentioned shelves earlier. This is what I'm excited about. I mentioned you have five sections. Anytime I cook something, I always cook it wrong. It doesn't matter what it is. I can turn <laughs> the grill on and somebody said I should have turned the grill on a different way. I think we can all agree that some people feel that the hottest part on a pellet smoker, I 100% agree, is typically above the fire pot. Since this fire pot is located in the middle, it kind of sucks because what if you had a big um, brisket and you just don't have enough room to get off the heat, right? If you put it here, your, your flat's there. If you put it here, your point's there. Um, with the idea of the shelves, not only can you store them in the back, you can break them down to smaller sections. Let's say you want to grill a steak, right? We all know that we disagree that the hottest part on the pellet smoker is right above the burn pot. Well, if you open your flame lever, now you've got those, those open flames and you're really close to the source, okay? What if all the other pellet smokers typically have a standard height and then you might have that second shelf right here, right? Well, you'll see people that put a water pan here and acts for two reasons. One, as a, a way to keep moisture in the pellet smoker and two, it acts as a heat diffuser. So a lot of times people will recommend cooking something on your second grate. With this, it kind of takes that feature out of it. Let's just say you want to keep that there. You can keep that one there and adjust your middle grate. Now all of a sudden you can raise your grate up if you want to. Let's say right there. You keep this one for, I'm just guessing, grilling. And then now if you want to put your brisket on there, now it's away from the heat source. You've got a lot more space between point A and point B instead of only having this option. Now, if you want to, you can add your water pan and you have a full rack to cook on. Okay, it gets even better. You can go higher if you want to. That is a lot of space. Even with the lid open and closing, it's no problem. If you notice this top shelf is a little bit smaller because it fits on the top, you can either decide to use it all the time or like I said, you can take it out and put it on the back side. The cool feature about these grates, every single one of them acts the same. I'm only gonna do one because you can imagine all the different configurations you wanna use. All these are stainless steel, which I think's, I think it's awesome. But they're e super easy to clean. Anytime you use stainless, super easy to clean. I like the fact that the grates run left and right, not up and down. It seems like it's naturally easier to flip left and right than it is to try to go forward and then flip. I like the left and right system. Some people might not like it as much. I'm a big fan of it. What I'm a big fan of is this right here. What a genius idea. You got screws in all of them. Like I said, this mirrors every single thing besides the size. You unscrew it. You can raise them up, take them off, however you want to do it. Now you can adjust the width of your shelves. Or let's say you need a space for something else. For some reason, you can do it like that. You can keep these forward and not even use the back. Whatever configuration you want to come up with, with these three shelves, that's completely up to you. The feature's there for all of them, and that's pretty cool. Way to screw back down. And there you go. Working your way around, you have your pellet dump. You just pull that out, all the pellets release down. Um, I do think there's enough room in there for a, a typical, like I use five gallon buckets all the time. Uh, I can tell you this, from as much as we've moved around already being put together, um, this thing moves way easier than what it was like uh, heavy wise. I know it sounds crazy, it's just, it's really easy to move. The Navigator only comes with two set wheels and two uh, twisting wheels. The fact that all four of these swivel makes it extremely easy to move. And it is like, I mean, it takes no effort at all. Those are pretty good wheels right there. 
4.3 inch display right here. You have your glass looking inside of your pellet hopper. This thing's smarter than I am. It can actually diagnose a problem. And when you do your startup, you actually go through that process. We'll get to that in a second. You also have bearable um, smoke control, which means you can adjust the amount of smoke you want on your food. You also have like a rapid fire ignition, which is supposed to heat up faster. I mean, this thing is a lot better than I am. One fantastic feature they came out with, I can't stress enough. I have no idea how well it's gonna work. If you notice, you got one, two, three, four, space, one, two, three. Well, if you throw all your pellets in there, then it'll feed the pellets naturally. I have noticed that this is like a, a lot steeper of an area on the bottom. I know it's hard to see because the protective mesh, but it looks like it when you dump it, you won't have as many pellets left over because the bottom of it is extremely steep. They've created this little plastic divider. So you put your divider in. I don't know the ratios, but considering your pellet hopper is a different size, I'm assuming this is going to be your major side. So you know, let's say you wanted hickory on this with a little um, cherry. This is going to be your dominant side because it has four. So my guess is that four is going to dump faster than three. But the more you move this up, then the difference of the ratio changes. I have no idea if it's ever going to matter. I know some people like the mixer pellets. Some people will take a five gallon bucket, mix it up like 20, 30, 50, 50, 75, 25, whatever you want to do, and then dump the whole thing again. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know. I don't forever want to taste the difference, but it is an idea that they've come up with. So I just thought I'd show that feature. You can keep it in there if you want, or if you don't want to, you can just take it out, take it out completely. But that just shows you what they've done. Oh, first things first, let's load up with pellets. This is a 40 pound hopper. I did not mention that because I just wanted to see if the bag would fit. I have a little bit left over, which is fine. Uh, but just going to show you how massive a hopper that is. We have other pellet smokers I worked with in the past at between like a 28, 30 or 20 pound hopper. You get nervous on those overnight cooks. I'm not going to lie. You know, like you want to fill it up right before you go to bed just to make sure. But with a 40 pound hopper, that is a lot that, of pellets. That looks like a lot of pellets. Yeah. I've only got one other smoker that has a 40 pound hopper. All right, we got it turned on and we're gonna to go to settings. So it's a touch screen. You can actually, right there, that diagnostic test, you can run that, test in progress. It'll run your auger, your uh, fire little thingamajigger for your pellets, uh, rapid igniter, your fan, and your Bluetooth connectivity, which we didn't do. Uh, we did, we don't do a lot of apps. Start. All right, you got your prom options. You got five seconds, three seconds, or hold prom. I'm just gonna press hold prom. Basically, what that's doing is forcing your pellets uh, from the hopper to your burn pot, right? So there's nothing inside of your uh, tube right now. And so this is basically just creating um, that area to happen faster. You can do five seconds, three seconds, and you only need to do this, for example, if you had to clean out your hopper for some reason something happened. Um, and there's like an air gap or for some reason there's a disruption between the amount of pellets in here versus uh, your uh, burn pot So once you hear it, you don't have to prime anymore There it goes hear it. You hear that? Yeah, so we're good. So alrighty. So we started With the pit boss just to let you know it's a little bit different than the other brands You got to keep your lid open during the initial process. That's what they recommend so what's going to happen is the basic cavity is going to fill up with a ton of smoke. That's the pellets uh, beginning to light. The smoke will dissipate. Once it dissipates, we can close the lid. And the manual says to turn on for 350 for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I'll show you something when we get to that process. Your dial works in five degree increments and it can go as low as 150 for the people that want to hold like a brisket or they want to keep something warm. I think that's a great feature. And I'm pretty sure it goes up to 500 degrees. Yeah, 500, it's maxed out. So we're going up 350. And there we go. One thing I just saw right there is a probe port. So you basically just slide your probe right through there. And it can connect to your two probe ports right there. It comes standard with two Pit Boss probes. I think that's pretty good considering it comes with a shelf and the probes. We have a pellet grill accessory like video, kind of like one of those things like 
things that you might have forgotten or things that you just didn't think of when you bought your pellet smoker. Uh, we have magnets that I always save for different reasons. Just like that, stops the smoke from coming out. Not a big deal. I'm just working my way through this screen. I mean, it's really incredible. I mean, you have like everything from like screensaver. You can adjust like how fast your screensaver comes on. You can lock it. Startup mode, you can do your display for your brightness, Celsius, Fahrenheit. Uh, you can hear that the fan's starting to roar, so my voice might be a little bit different, but the P setting, um, you can actually turn it like to automatically set like a power smoke mode, PID mode, smoke mode. Um, I think there's actually a way in here, I'll have to figure it out to where, you know when you turn on a grill and it's automatically set to a certain temperature? I think you can change this to where, let's say like every single time you turn it on, it can go to 250, it can go to 225, it can go to 235. I mean, this thing is really, it's really involved. I mean, I think this is what pellet smokers are about. I wanted to get the lid closed before I say something else. Um, most of my grills, I fall into the habit of thinking that you need to oil down your smoker before you really season it. I know when you season it, you're supposed to burn off the manufacturer oils. Typically, I've taken soap and water kind of like rinse it off, rinse the shelves off, rinse that um, bottom shelf out where the, uh, the grease hits it and all that stuff, the uh, diffuser plate. I've only had luck with that with one grill and it's a completely different grill that's not even fair to the market. So I'm actually not even gonna do it. So if you wanna spray your grill down with Pam or an animal fat or whatever and wipe it all down, that's fine. I have found no success doing it. So I'm actually just gonna burn it the way it says in the manual at 350. We're gonna give it about an hour. And then after that, it's done. Like, and then I'm just gonna cook on it for the rest of the video. So I'm not gonna worry about oiling it and all that stuff. So we'll see how it works out. Alrighty, we're about an hour in. You see here, nothing's really changed, which is what we're looking for. Like I said, just burns those oils off, any debris, stuff like that. So then we'll just go here. Uh, we're gonna go to shutdown mode. Shutting down, and that's just about as easy as it happens. Kind of talk to you about features and or what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I let it do its thing. I think with most pellet smokers in today's market, I've mentioned this several times, they are designed to smoke at 250, right? I mean, we're not in like the 1900s anymore. If it has flaws, we won't know until we start getting there. Um, whether or not producers of smoke, I don't know. I am looking forward to compare it to other models, head to head, ribs, brisket, uh, chuck roast, stuff like that. Cause now I think it's unique. I think it's unique in the fact that it has a ton of cooking space and it's priced, I feel fairly. I don't think everything out there is priced fairly. What you get out of this in return for the price, I think is a great bang for the buck. I think the Navigator hovers around like 9.99. You can catch it on sale but it just goes to show you how fast technology happens. That was like the height of the market for a pit boss at the time. And I've been completely satisfied with my navigator. It didn't have Wi-Fi, it didn't have the touch screen, didn't have the space, but we've never had a problem out of it. It cooked, you know, very well. It got me into pellet smoking. And it just goes to show the, like, you know, with upgrades, people, I think all the brands are listening to consumers. You know, you got the front shelf you didn't have to buy. I think that's nice got the cabinet storage under there for pellets or whatever you may have the foldable shelves what i am interested in now is if we use the same pellets and we compare it to for example the weber or the traeger or we compare all three of them together what is the quality like you know if you burn something for eight hours i wouldn't say burn cook something smoke something for eight hours and you use the same pellet can you taste the difference right i wouldn't think so but it could be the way their algorithms are developed inside the system. All those ideas that we have, we won't know until we get there, right? So the features I think are definitely there. When you look at the cooking space, it's gigantic. It's like 1,623 square inches of cooking space. I'm sure you're not gonna use all that if you don't have to, but it just goes to show you. And I think also to one thing before we get off here, each brand that I've learned is kind of like uniquely different in what it, what it offers, right? So I still haven't found the perfect pellet grill necessarily for me 
because there's like I want to take bits and pieces for each one. You know, I wish it had a rotisserie. I'm a rotisserie fan. But I also love the idea of the flame option. I'm a huge flame option fan. So winding down, uh, like I said, the features are there. The computer is smarter than I am. I think is the more we cook on it, the more advanced we can get with it as well. We can learn with it. Uh, whether you want to do smoke mode, I just learned that there is a cold mode where you can actually start a pellet tube and turn the fan on only. And it can create that cold smoke feature for you. So looking forward to many cooks on it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comment down below. Remember, this is only available at Academy. Um, I did get mine built, okay? Uh, it was an option on there. It was built for me. I just showed up, put it in the back of the truck. They helped me load it. And when we got here, I had people help me unload it. So if that's an option for you guys, there you go. All right, like always, don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Out first? with the old, in with the new. I think we're gonna do a standard pork butt. I just wanna see what kind of color we get on it good 8, 10, 12 hour smoke, something like that. Just keep it simple, see what I can do.